Hello. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that occasionally I'll go out and do a little trip, but it's not a big part of my content. And I want to change that. I want to start actually going out and seeing the history that I'm talking about, because that's important to me. I spend so much time in front of my computer writing content. I want to get out more. And I haven't been able to do a lot of that this summer. I've been inside working. It's where I live in Alberta. It's been smoky all the time. It's smoky today. But today's kind of an important day for me because it's September 6th, 2023. And it was one year ago today that my best friend, Boris, passed away. And I didn't want to be home. I wanted to get out and just spend the day out. So that's what I'm doing. And <clears throat> I enjoy watching van life videos. I'm not living in my car. Uh, but next year, I actually want to spend a few months traveling around Canada, seeing things and sleeping in the back of my car. So this is kind of a precursor to that. I don't really know where I'm going today. I'm kind of planning on going to Rocky Mountain House because it's the essentially the home of my favorite historical figure, David Thompson. So that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm just going to drive to Ward's Rocky Mountain House and see what we find along the way. And this is just a way for me to kind of practice making these videos because I will still make history videos on my channel, but I want to make more of these type of videos, going out and seeing the history and talking to everybody about the history. So. I really hope everybody enjoys today's video and as we get through the autumn and even into winter a little bit, hopefully there will be a bit more. So let's see what we can find. We made it to Rocky Mountain House, which is about two hours south of where I live. I've only been here once, but I wasn't able to go to the museum because it was closed. So we're here now. We're going to check out the community because there's a ton of history here. I mean, when we think of Alberta, we don't think of it having a long, long history other than, than the indigenous history. But Rocky Mountain House actually has a history dating back to 1799 when it was founded, which is unbelievable. And the reason it was founded was because of this man right here, my favorite historical figure, David Thompson. But it's not just him. We have up here, Charlotte Small, who is his wife of 58 years. She was with him for the majority of a lot of his explorations. He traveled 90,000 kilometers across the Canadian landscape, mapping millions of square kilometers. And she was right there with him and she helped him in so many ways with finding food, finding roots, negotiating with the indigenous, raising their children. They had 13 children, but only about five were actually born on their travels. But right there, there's my man, David Thompson. Welcome to school. So at the Rocky Mountain House Museum, there is a wonderful schoolhouse. This is one of the most elaborate schoolhouses that I've seen. It's a beautiful little building. Now these schoolhouses were usually scattered across the prairies. They would be built on the land of an individual who usually donated the land. And it would allow the children from the surrounding area to attend. This is long before we started consolidating schools and busing children in. Kids were usually walking to these schools and taking a horse, maybe, rain or shine. This is a very nice schoolhouse. You can see that it has these big windows here. It gives these children 
a wonderful view. This must have been like where you sat if you were a good student because you usually didn't see windows like this in a schoolhouse. Usually they were smaller windows like those up there, but to have something that kind of went across, that's amazing. And so in the middle of the schoolhouse, you actually had this giant boiler. Now, this kept everything warm. I'm in here right now. It's, there's actually, it's a bit chilly in here. It's about maybe 12 to 15 degrees outside. And I'm feeling a bit of a chill in here. So I can only imagine what it would have been like when it was minus 30 degrees or minus 20 degrees even. So this big boiler, well, not boiler, I guess, this furnace would keep everything running and warm and the children would be nice and warm. And the teacher would have to come in one to two hours early, put wood in this and get everything going, get it warming up, melting water for the kids. So she had to sit in here usually for at least an hour waiting for everything to warm up. And I say she because usually it was a woman. Often there were male teachers as well, but it was always a single woman if it was a woman. If she got married, she was no longer able to teach. She had to be at home, which, you know, that was the time, I guess. But you can see that this would have been the teacher's desk and looking out at all of the students. What a wonderful view this is. Like I said, this is a wonderful schoolhouse, but the schoolhouse wasn't just a place where children learned arithmetic and history and all of that. It was also where the community came together. These schoolhouses were often the first community hall in an area. This would be where children would obviously learn, but you'd also have people coming over for council meetings or for community meetings. There would be dances held here. The, one of the biggest events of the year at these schoolhouses was the Christmas concert. So you'd take all of these chairs and desks and you'd probably push them against the wall and stack them against the wall and everybody would stand in the middle and then up at the front, you would have everybody putting on some big concert. These were huge affairs. Everybody looked forward to them. And you'd have dances here and people would dance in the middle and children would sleep in the coach room until the parents were ready to go. This is a wonderful schoolhouse. You have this big blackboard that stretches right across that people have written on. There are things, there's multiple languages on here. So obviously people have come to this museum from across the world, which is really cool. Just a couple of the languages that you can notice. What a wonderful schoolhouse. This is a beautiful building. Uh, built in 1923 and still holding pretty strong. Our next stop is the forestry cabin. This was located closer to the Rocky Mountains because obviously Rocky Mountain House is close to the Rocky Mountains. I think it's only about an hour away. Small little cabin, little stove in the corner. Usually the forest ranger would live in here and they would be on call to help people to deal with things. But there's not much here. It's, it's pretty small. You have a whole bunch of really antique skis up there. You have a couple of old snowshoes right there. But all in all, a really tiny little cabin. And uh, this was usually built about 4,000 feet up a mountain. But it would be quiet. I'd enjoy it. Just sit here reading. Can't complain with that. We've come to Rocky Mountain House, as I said, and if you're going to go to Rocky Mountain House, you might as well check out the Rocky Mountain House historical or national historical site. I've never actually been here. I think I'm at the right one. There were two different roads you could take, so I'm a bit confused exactly where I'm going here. While we walk along the David Thompson Trail, I thought I would answer a question that I get often which is, why is David Thompson your favorite historical figure? And it's because of Canada people's history. And it had a good segment on David Thompson. And I just was fascinated by this man who spent his life exploring and seeing things and doing things. And just the very idea of being able to be out in the wilderness without fences and roads and, and just seeing what's out there really appealed to me. And I liked him. I thought he was a good, interesting person. I mean, in a time when a lot of fur traders would have country marriages with an indigenous woman and then more or less cast her and the children aside when he went back east, 
David Thompson didn't do that. He stayed married to Charlotte Small for 58 years, which is amazing. And she was a huge part of his success. And he was mostly forgotten when he died. He was poor and destitute. And it wasn't until about 60, 70 years after he died, he started getting his due. And now he's considered one of the greatest land geographers in history. And my personal favorite figure from Canadian history. Now, when you go to Rocky Mountain House, you will find the Rocky Mountain House Fort, which was the fort that was founded in 1799. Now, I was incorrect when I said that it was David Thompson who founded the fort. It was, in fact, James MacDonald of the Northwest Mounted Company. David Thompson used this as his base of operations. And this is the fort, what's left of it. You can see all of these divots where you would have had buildings and other things. It was not a large fort, but it's really cool to see, like you can see the, the line of the wall of the fort. And then all the little spots where you would have had buildings. It's really cool. You're literally standing in history when you're standing in this fort. Now the original purpose, of course, was to put the fort here so that they could trade with the indigenous peoples. And by trading with the indigenous peoples here, they were able to cut off the Hudson's Bay Company, which was their main rival. They would actually merge into one company after the Pemmican War in 1821. So very cool that you can see this fort here and see where this would have stood and, and the landscape around it, which obviously probably looks a bit different than it did back then, but it would have been nice and quiet here. This is where David Thompson would have wintered, especially before he made his amazing journey down the Columbia River. So why don't we explore a bit more? Now, of course, located near the fort, you would have the indigenous themselves. The squirrel is very angry with me for some reason. But you would have the indigenous living near the fort because that's where the trading was going on. That's where you got supplies. So at the Rocky Mountain House National Historic Site, you have one indigenous, I guess, kind of a teepee. I forget what they call it, but not quite a teepee. You do have one over there and you have one right there. And they would have camped right near the fort. The fort is actually just over there. You would have had them camping near the fort because that's where they were able to do all of the trading and there was supplies there and it was easier to deal with the winter when you're close to the fort. So when you come to the Rocky Mountain House, you can see that. Now I mentioned that Rocky Mountain House was established because it was close to the Rocky Mountains, but there was another much more important reason why it was established where it was established. The river. This was the highway. This was the first highway, the highways, first highways in Canada where people would travel across the country. You could get <laughs> two different places very quickly. This is where the voyageurs would take their canoes loaded with a variety of items. They would go to places like Fort Edmonton where they would trade and it all came from here. There would be a lot of canoes that would stop here, take furs up there to the fort and make money and do it all again. And it's actually a very beautiful river. There's a really cool thing that you can see at the Rocky Mountain House National Historic Site. And it's this canoe. And it may seem like it's just a regular canoe, but this canoe took part in the longest canoe race in history. 5,000 and a bit kilometers from right here in Rocky Mountain House all the way to Montreal. It was the Centennial Voyageur Canoe Pageant and it was part of the Centennial Celebrations in Canada. So they left on May 24th, 1967 and they arrived in Montreal on September 5th, 1967. And this is Alberta's canoe, which was named for David Thompson. Each of the canoes, there was uh, eight provinces and two territories that took part. Prince Edward Island and Newfoundland did not. And each one was named for an explorer in Alberta named theirs for David Thompson. Now the canoe race was won by Manitoba, 
but Alberta finished a respectable third, which is really cool. Anyways, this is the canoe. I actually just did an episode on this that should have come out by now on my podcast. That's the actual canoe. This is so cool. I love history. You can actually touch this history. A group of 10 men, teams of six, paddle this across the country. How awesome is that? I would love to do that. It, it's just cool. I, 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 it's really neat because I just did an episode about this and now I'm actually standing at the canoe. I'm actually seeing history that I just talked about and that's awesome. Now the last stop in the Rocky Mountain House Histor National Historic Site is Acton House, which is actually located pretty close to the fort that I showed you. And that was the Northwest Mount Northwest Mountain, the North the Northwest Company's fort. This was the Hudson's Bay Company fort. So they were obviously rivals. They did not like each other from 1811, I think, 1811 to 1821. There was the Pemmican War, which actually resulted in a battle, the Battle of Seven Oaks. And in 1821, the two companies were merged into the Hudson's Bay Company. So this was the Fort of Acton House. You can see that this one, I don't know what these buildings are. They don't, they don't have any placards to tell me what each one is, but this is the fort that they've kind of recreated the shell of it using some steel. And it's actually kind of cool. You know, you, this right here would have been kind of the, the gathering area. You can see the various buildings all around it. Personally, I like the Northwest Company's Fort location a bit better because you can actually see the where it was dug into the dirt. feels like you're actually touching history there, which is really cool. But nonetheless, this is kind of cool to be able to see Acton House, which is far less well known. Rocky Mountain House, the fort by created by the Northwest Company. Far more famous, but still, Acton House, you can also see that.